morning. My name is Megan Edwards of Focus Communications, and today we're getting the latest updates from Kuya Silver, which trades on the Canadian Stock Exchange under the symbol KUYA. Joining me once again is Kuya's president and CEO, David Stein. David, thanks for coming on the show today. Thank you. I appreciate the, appreciate the opportunity. So, David, to start things off, can you please provide us with, with an overview of Kuya Silver and two high-grade silver projects? Sure. So Kuya, we're, you know, we're best known for our Bethania Silver project in Peru, which uh, just recently started production. Um, Bethania is a, you know, high grade uh, silver mine was was in production about seven, eight years ago. We've just recently restarted it and we're ramping up production now. Um, it's we're expecting big things from it. Um, it should be very profitable operation. Um, but even more exciting than that about Bethania is just the huge growth potential. Um, lots of opportunities to expand production and also expand resources. We've got a lot of very, you know, kind of low hanging fruit um, exploration around the mine. And, uh, and, and we should, you know, as, as we start building up more of a cash position there, we can go out and drill and uh, really expand the resources uh, hugely, in my opinion. So. That's a that's a really exciting uh, project and a great way to you know kind of start a real silver business, which is which has really been our our focus from day one. Um, we have the second project in Northern Ontario, which is bears some similarities to Bethania in the sense that it's another you know high grade uh, silver uh, vein mine uh, mining opportunity. It's a historical mining camp. There were dozens and dozens of old mines here. Uh, going back to the early 20th century, all the way up to the 1980s, and we um, have you know recently made new discoveries there, and are you know really trying to kind of crack the code at how to find more silver there, um, because the easy stuff, let's face it, has been found. So, um, so that's a great project, huge land package, and uh, that's what we're going to be mostly talking about today. So yesterday, the company announced its 2024 exploration program at Silver Kings that will include up to 10,000 meters of drilling over several campaigns. Now, before we talk about these upcoming programs, can you give us our audience a recap of last year's exploration on the property? Sure. Um, if if we look if we look here, here's where we made our uh, a big new grassroots discovery uh, at, at the project. And uh, we, we were in a zone that was, you know, within about a kilometer of where we made our discovery, there was some, you know, quite a bit of active mining. Um, you know, the Kerr Lake area to the south uh, was home to four or five mines that today would be one mine. Um, and that together produced about 60 million ounces of silver uh, in, in a very small area. So we're looking kind of for something like that. And, um, we uh, we figured um, that the best place to look would be below this diabase unit, which is this orange uh, unit here in the in the long section cartoon. Um, it's it's a seems to be an important uh, rock unit in terms of where the silver these blowouts of the of these uh, clusters of silver veins seem to be located. Um, but itself does not tend to be a good host rock uh, unless you're right near the margins. So um, so the the places where the Diabase has already been eroded away, um, and the silver veins were exposed to the surface. We assume that those have been found already. Uh, that's where the mining took place from the early 1900s, you know, all the way up many decades in, into the 1900s, into the mid 20th century. And what we're really looking for are the buried targets that the old timers could not or did not find. Um, and with that in mind, we drilled a target that was um, 200 meters below surface. Um, so we had to drill through this barren diabase unit here. And then when we hit the margin of the diabase with the older rocks, it did, the, the structures do seem to blow out. And then we get, um, and then we get, uh, uh, we get the, the silver, uh, mineralization at depth. So what I mean is, you know, this is all the diabase here is barren. And then these older rocks, once you get down here, you can see all these red lines. Those are all silver veins we're hitting. And these clusters of silver veins is how you really make the resources in the mining uh, yeah, profitable in this camp, in our opinion. So that's where we hit the, the 15,000 grams per ton over 3.3 meters. We had several other great uh, intercepts in that same program as well. And uh, that's what we call the Angus vein and saw on the Campbell Crawford property. And that was our discovery last year. So we're now expanding on that. We're expanding on that target itself. 
We've got other targets, including another discovery we made um, last fall. And uh, we really want to develop kind of a hub and spoke uh, type model here where we have multiple mines feeding one centralized mill. That's really even going back to the history of the cobalt camp. That's really how the camp operated. And that's, in our opinion, the best way to move forward with this. So let's talk about yesterday's press release. Can you walk us through the various targets you'll be focused on for this upcoming drill campaign? Sure. So this is a map we put out yesterday um, and it's showing our entire property package, which is it stretches roughly 30 kilometers from north to south. Um, the, the Kerr Lake area up in the northern part where the three stars are at the top. That's where we've done the most most of our drilling to date and where we made our, our new discoveries last year. Uh, not just Campbell Crawford, but we also made a discovery um, about 300 meters uh, west uh, called Air Geod. That's a property next door to it, um, which has similar looking characteristics to Campbell Crawford. So that's um, that's going to be an area of focus for us, those two targets. Air Geod, we only have the one hole into it. So it is really uh, open season there to uh, to drill. Um, and and in fact, there was a there's a there's a vein that we mapped at surface called the Clark vein. That we were trying to hit at depth and we actually didn't hit it so with with that in mind um we'll be we'll be drilling air geod we'll be looking at drilling campbell crawford and expanding some of the uh the cluster of mineralization that we've already found there with our with our drilling from 2023 and then uh i'll just go back to this for a second we 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 are we really like some of the the areas in the silver center area that's this little uh or big area to the south um this was actually a, a mining town back in the early 20th century completely gone now not even a ghost town there's like no buildings there at all but there was a mining town here called silver center and um we we, we see lots of potential there you know i think next to Kerr lake it's our top target uh on the on the bigger property package um and then we we have also put in a, a kind of a third target in between which we uh, have liked for a long time. Uh, it's been high on our priority at last, but we've never been able to drill it. So that's Marianne, um, which has some great historical results we'd like to follow up on. So as we discussed before, uh, you have a significant pipeline of targets within this district scale property. Can we expect the company to test some additional targets in this campaign? Yes. Um, so I think when we look at the prioritizing um the the targets uh we're gonna start with air geod and campbell crawford they're really right next to each other um so although they are separated by a very small lake or a pond in between um they're they're close to each other so we'll be kind of drilling those targets together um and then i think we'll uh we'll be doing uh the the frontier northwest which is in the silver center area um that's a target we we quite like we're following up on some really hot surface samples there. Um, some of the best surface samples we've ever found, including some really high grade multi percent cobalt surface, which in our view, in our in our model, that means we're very close to the silver there because you get the, the silver core grading to ultimately the cobalt in the same vein uh, in most cases. So we we have we see the cobalt there. We don't really see the, the silver yet, but that could mean that it's just 20, 30, 50 meters below us. Right. So that's a really good target as well. And then, as I mentioned before, Marianne, that's one that we've had on our list for a long time because there's some really good historical uh, drilling there. And also um, it fits our, our, our geological model in terms of you know, favorable uh, targets. So, um, so that's another area that we'd like to get to uh, at some point. Thanks, David. And to cap things off, could you tell our listeners what really excites you about the company as you're now running exploration and production across your project portfolio? Yeah, look, I, th I think uh, we're we're in in both projects in in that in that sweet spot where we're in the best area over the next, you know, call it one, maybe one to two years to create the most value really quickly. And, you know, that's uh, when you look at uh, when you look at sort of later stage projects uh, like Bethania, it's when the mine goes into production, kind of transitions from being a money losing, losing development project into a money making mine that's when a huge amount of value is created typically and we're right in that area now um and then with silver kings we're 
earlier stage where we've just made a new discovery there and we're kind of starting to drill it out, flush it out and put some more meat on the bone. So, you know, it, it, you typically don't get a lot of value initially from it. And then as you uh, prove out that it's a real deposit, you get more and more value in the market. And we're right there with Silver King. So, you know, really, and, you know, with Silver King's now fully funded, we've got the fan you go up and running. Um, you know, we, we can generate news on both targets uh, going forward, both projects. And I think that gives our investors, you know, multiple ways to win as we as we look into the next few months. Well, thanks again for your time today, David. And we're looking forward to having you back on again soon with additional updates. My pleasure. Anytime.